Hi, my name is Bob McCauley, owner of the Watershed Wellness Center, uh, watershed.net. And uh, this is a, a video response to uh, some things that David Wolf uh, has said about water. And um, it, I want to make clear from the beginning, I don't have anything against David Wolf. He's done some great uh, work uh, about with raw foods. I'm a raw foodist. I agree with him that 100%. Uh, he goes out and finds all these wild foods. It's fantastic. Uh, but when it comes to water, uh, David doesn't know anything about it at all. And just to give you a little bit of background, um, you know, water has always been in my family. My father was uh, had a doctor from MIT in environmental engineering. He taught at Michigan State University. He ran into his own engineering company for over 18 years. I worked there. Uh, what I know about groundwater and groundwater um, uh, purification and groundwater quality is what I learned from my father. He was really a great expert, very renowned in the Midwest um, for many, many years. Um, and... Um, you know, some of the things that David said here is just uh, completely wrong, and I want to bring them out. Again, nothing against David, but when I'm, I keep hearing things that pop up about water and water quality and where to get water and what is the best water, and I want to refute those things. Um, it's not as like everything he says here is, is harmful, but uh, it's a lot of misinformation, and it's got to stop. So, first of all, one of the th uh, somebody says, what kind of water do you drink? David says, I go days without drinking water if I can't get the kind of water um, I want. Well, that's, 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 that's crazy. Uh, I don't ever go days without water. I mean, I drink a gallon of water every single day. Um, when I travel, I can't always get exactly the kind of water that I want. Uh, and I can get into that in maybe another video about what I do drink when I'm traveling. But going days without water is a huge mistake. I never go days without water. I drink a minimum of a gallon of water every single day. And I usually probably drink at least a gallon and a half. And depending on my day, if I've been working out a lot, which I do, I get into the fire and fresh I might drink as much as two gallons. Well, we can, that's for another video. Um, now, David says spring water is the best. Uh, I dispute that right, right away. Spring water is not the best. It depends on what kind of spring water. Water. And the best water really is groundwater you get from at least, you know, hopefully 100 feet, um, maybe 200 feet or, or lower. Um, I happen to live in a house with a well. Uh, I'm very fortunate. And, um, and that, that, um, that well is about uh, 218 feet. And then at work, um, at, at the watershed, we have a well. Very fortunate to have that well. If you ever saw it, um, you would not be able to think we could have a well in that location. Um, and there's no way they'd let us put one there today, but I've had that place for over 17 years now. So back then, they I had the well, and that was it. And uh, that one's around about uh, 210 feet. And that's a, that's a, this is a sandstone formation, and it's drawn directly up to the surface. It's an artesian well. Uh, a lot of people don't know what artesian means, but um, we can explain that in another video because I don't want to get into that. It's, it's too complicated. Um, and to start describing that. But uh, <clears throat> this is what, there, there are certain properties of water that uh, are out there, and they, you know, they don't change from place to place. I mean, what you're looking for is a good quality groundwater and draw it up. And spring water can be very good in places, and, and other places it's not as good. Um, all water should be filtered. Um, this idea that you don't, I don't know when it became a bad thing for water to be run through a particulate filter to remove uh, particles from the water, or a carbon filter, especially if you're, you know, in a city water, and that's all you have to drink, you want to take that out, uh, take the, the chemicals out of the water, either chloramines or the chlorine. I don't go anywhere um, without a shower filter. I mean, I don't travel anywhere. Um, I don't need it on my house because I don't have chlorine in the water to begin with. Um, but if I go anywhere, I go go <clears throat> I go with a KDF filter, and I, I bring my pliers with me, and they're under seven inches so I can get through security. And I take off the shower head when I get into the hotel room, and I put on my KDF shower filter. And if you don't do that, I think you're crazy. I mean, you're breathing in all that chlorine gas. You're getting it right on your skin. And, um, I mean, i got to do a lot of traveling. I, I see a lot the inside of a lot of hotels during the year. Um, it's not my favorite thing, but that's what you have to do sometimes. Um, David talks a lot about Victor Schauberger, and, and I'm, I, I like Victor Schauberger. Uh, I don't make the, the kind of, um, you know, God out of him and this genius that a lot of other people do, but what he talked about, uh, Victor Schauberger, was, um, was energy in nature, 
Um, he talked a lot about vortices and energy. Uh, a good example of a, vo- a really powerful vortice would be a tornado. I mean, you, you see the power of, of, of energy when it's harnessed in a certain way and how, how nature works. And it's very interesting stuff. But, um, you know, this idea that water it has energy and, and, and it doesn't have energy in the sense that it, it, it can propel itself along. I mean, there's pent up energy in every single atom, but the idea that water just sitting there or water in the ground has energy and that it can move up high and then come down and nobody has, has, knows how this happened. Water moves to the surface through pressure. It obeys the laws of physics. And that's one of the things that I keep hearing in this, this idea that water, uh, you know, water is living. Water has energy into itself. It moves by itself, and it doesn't. Uh, water is not living. Water doesn't have consciousness. Water doesn't get angry. Water doesn't calm down. You can't calm down water. It doesn't have consciousness. I mean, to suggest these things, it's just, it's just imaginary. It just it doesn't radiate energy. And he says he can, you know, it spins through these pipes in his house, and he can feel the energy. Well, I would like to see somebody measure that energy. I mean, if you can feel it, I mean, you should be able to, you know, get some kind of an instrument and measure that en- that energy. And if you, if you can't find that instrument in today's world with all the sensitive equipment that we have, it doesn't exist. You're not radiating any kind of energy there. So you just you're just kind of making this up. It just and water water doesn't move by sucking or pulling. It moves by gravity. I mean, you either pushing it with a pump. Or, uh, or it's being uh, moved to the surface through pressure, or uh, something like a volcano, um, but but uh, different forces completely, uh, or um, or it's moving through gravity. Well, water doesn't defy the laws of physics, and it is not this idea of this animism, this uh, uh, applying uh, this the uh, life to inanimate objects. I mean, I thought we got rid of that a long, long, long time ago with the tribes and whatever that was, and we stopped thinking, you know, this rock is God or whatever it is. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, you know, water just doesn't have these these qualities. Now, water, uh, he says the water comes out of his tap at, at 10 to 18 parts per million. Well, that's not safe to consume. You should have at least 50 parts per million, and ide- uh, ideally it's 100 parts or higher. And uh, because anything below 50, you're going to begin to leach the minerals out of your out of your body. And spring water should have, you know, he said, makes the statement, spring water should have very little TDS if you do it right. What do you mean if you do it right? Are you telling me that he thinks it comes out of the ground at a, at 100 parts per million? And then by the time it comes out of his tap, it's only 18 parts per million or 10 parts per million? Where did all the minerals go? What happened to them? Where, where did they evaporate? I mean, how could you come out here at 100 and then now it's only 18? Where did they go? Because the only way you can remove uh, minerals for, from water is through purification. You go through an ion bed or reverse osmosis or distillation. That's how you remove minerals from water. It's the only way to do it. You can't just uh, spin the water and expect the minerals to not only come out, but to d- completely disappear. That's not going to happen. Um, <clears throat> Uh, you know, I'll say it again, it doesn't defy the laws of physics. Um, you know, and as far as drinking reverse osmosis or purified water, you know, this is really bad for you. And again, only as a last resort would I, wear, would I ever consume that water. Um, you know, and I get frustrated too. You go to an airport and, uh, you know, all the concessions are bought out by, you know, Pepsi and all you can find is Aquafina or Densai by Coca-Cola or whatever, and there's no minerals in there. It's very frustrating <laughs> that to me that you can't get a natural spring water with a decent amount of minerals in it. You know, like I said, 50 parts per million or higher. Most spring waters out of the market, you're going to find have at least 100 parts per million. Um, you know, a couple of other things that David said in the video, you know, that he's seen TDS very high, New York City at 1,000. Well, there's no, there's nowhere in this country. I lived in New York City for 10 years, and New York City gets its water from the Adirondacks. So it's very low TDS. Um, you know, it's probably around 75 to 100. And um, the idea, the only place in the country that has um, minerals, uh, water with minerals in it, a TDS above 500 would be the southwest of the United States. That's New Mexico, Arizona. That's it. There's no other place I've ever seen in the United States that has this high amount of, of minerals in it. And those minerals, uh, that water just needs to be filtered through a particulate filter to take out all the extra minerals that wouldn't get dissolved in the water. And then they, then you can, you know, you would safely drink the water. Um, so what is the best water to drink? Because he's telling people in the cities, go out and get water and glass. Well, you know, I, I got to tell you, people in New York City, uh, first of all, they don't have transportation. Only 10% of the people there 
live in cars. So we're in the average city. Who's going to get glass jugs and go out to a spring and haul in all this water and then be able to drink for them and their families and drink a gallon a day? It's completely impractical. And again, if you can get to a spring and 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 get some of that water, uh, that's fine. But um, you know, still, I would want it filtered personally. I would want the water filtered. I think you're crazy to drink water that hasn't been filtered. Um, what is the best water? Well, it's ionized water, without doubt. Um, ionized water is water that has number one been filtered, pre-filtered, and then it's been run over a positive negative electrode. And the reason I like it so much is that it mimics all the same qualities as raw fruits and vegetables. It has a negative charge, a negative ORP that reduces the oxidation of the body like raw fruits and vegetables. It has an abundance of electrons um, like uh, like like raw fruits and vegetables. It is extreme because of those electrons. It's extremely alkaline, raises the body pH like raw fruits and vegetables. It has very small water molecule clusters. It's structured water, it, uh, which is very important, uh, and it hydrates extremely efficiently and then pushes out all the things that don't belong in the body, which we commonly refer to as toxins. So it's extremely detoxifying. So ionized water for sure is the best water you can drink if you want to take spring water and ionize it. Fantastic. If you want to do it with groundwater, fantastic. As long as you properly filter it, there's very few waters unless it's been contaminated, which there's lots of contaminated waters in the world. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And it's a, it's a big challenge and it's a big problem. But, um, it, you know, filtration has come a long way and we can take a lot of stuff out of the water, uh, that we couldn't do, didn't used to be able to take. One thing we can't take out of the water is minerals. So the idea of demineralizing water, um, just through filtration or anything, you can't do that. Um, at the beginning of the video, uh, David said, you know, water is a hobby with me. I, a hobby, you know, it's, er, it's, a, it's a water uh, and herb hunting. Well, my advice to you, David, is stick to the herb hunting. Uh, you know, I'm a master herbalist myself. I know lots about herbs, but I bet um, you and I could, you could take me out into the wild and show me all sorts of herbs and hunt for wild fr foods, and uh, you could teach me a lot about herbs because I know you know a lot about that. My advice, no offense, David, stick to the herb hunting and stay away from the water. You don't know what you're talking about.